Hello world, it's Siraj, and let's laser focus on the role of probability theory in machine learning by building a spam classifier from scratch. Life is full of uncertainty. We try things which we think will probably succeed, but we're not certain. Will it rain today? Is it okay for me to dance in public? Should I invest more time in this relationship? Probability theory gives us a framework to model these decisions, and by doing so, we can make them more efficiently. There exist branches of math that help us make decisions when we have perfect information, but probability trains us to make decisions where there are indeed observable patterns, but also a degree of uncertainty, aka real life. It's a measure of how likely something is to happen, and the practice of analyzing events governed by probability is called statistics. A simple example is flipping a coin. There are only two possible outcomes, heads or tails. We can model the probability of heads happening since we know two things, the number of ways that can happen and the total number of outcomes. We've got a 50% chance in this case, just like how often Bluetooth decides to work. This is a random variable. It denotes something about which we are uncertain, an unpredictable event. It's not a variable in the way that algebra denotes them. Instead, it has a whole set of values, also called the sample space, and the probability of any one value in this set is denoted this way. They can be either discrete, so they only take certain values, or continuous, taking any value within a range. If we have two possible events, A and B, say we're tossing a coin and throwing a six-sided die, we can measure their probabilities three different ways. Given that a coin lands on heads, what's the probability that the die lands on four? This is the conditional probability. We could also model the probability that both events occur, like what's the probability that the coin lands on heads and the die lands on four? That's the joint probability. And if we want the probability for specific outcomes, like just the coin or just the die, we call that the marginal probability. We make lots of assumptions like this in machine learning. Sometimes they're wrong. Numenta. So there's this really popular formula called Bayes' theorem that's built on top of the axioms of conditional probability. It's called a theorem because we can prove its truth using logic. It states that for two events, A and B, if we know the conditional probability of B given A and the probability of A, we can compute the conditional probability of A given B. In other words, the posterior probability of A given B can be calculated by multiplying the likelihood by the prior probability terms and dividing their product by the evidence term. The prior probability of an event, often called the prior, is the probability calculated using info that is already known. The prior probability of rain on a given day could be calculated as 0.6. If you know that 60% of the days on that same date have been rainy for the past 100 years, we started with a prior and now we have new information that we can use to more accurately re-estimate the same probability. As the Bayesian statistician Lindley once put it, grab your glocks when you see, wait, wrong quote. Today's posterior is tomorrow's prior. We can use this theorem to update probability in light of new knowledge. So how is this used in machine learning? There's a family of linear classifiers that are based off of Bayes' theorem called naive Bayes classifiers. They tend to perform really well, especially for small sample sizes. That's where they outperform more powerful alternatives. Naive Bayes classifiers are used in a bunch of different fields, from diagnosing diseases, to sentiment analysis, to classifying emails as spam, which is what we'll do. They make two big assumptions about the data. The first is that the samples are independent and identically distributed. They act as random variables that are independent from each other and are drawn from a similar probability distribution. The second assumption is conditional independence of features. That means that the likelihood of the samples can be directly estimated from the training data instead of evaluating all possibilities of x. So given an n-dimensional feature vector, we can calculate the class conditional probability. That means how likely is it to observe this particular pattern x given that it belongs to 
the class Y. In practice, that assumption is violated a good amount of time. Regardless, they still perform pretty well. To make a prediction using naive Bayes, we'll calculate probabilities of the instance belonging to each class and select the class value with the highest one. This kind of categorical data is a great use case for naive Bayes. We'll start by loading up our data file. It's in CSV format so we can open the file using the popular pandas data processing module and store each line in a data frame object using its read function. Each email message is labeled either spam or ham. We can split the data into a training set to test our model and a testing set to evaluate its prediction capability. For our spam classification problem, in the context of Bayes' theorem, we can set A to the probability that the email is spam and B as the contents of the email. So if the probability that an email is spam is greater than the probability that it's not, we'll classify it as spam, else we won't. Since Bayes' theorem results in the divisor of probability of B in both cases, we can remove it from the equation for our comparison. Calculating the probability of A and the probability of not A is simple. They're just the percentages from our training set which are spam versus not spam. The harder part is calculating the probability of B given A and the probability of B given not A. To do this, we'll use the bag of words model. That means we treat a piece of text as a bag of unique words with no attention paid to their ordering. For each word, we calculate the percentage of times it shows up in spam and not spam emails. And to calculate another conditional probability for an entire email, we just take the product of the former conditional probability for every word in the email. This is done during classification, not training time. With these functions, we can construct our classifier function, which gets called for every email and uses our previously defined functions to classify them. That's it. Now we can classify new emails as spam or not spam really easily. Hello? You bloody forgot the Laplace smoothing. Thanks, Em. I can't believe you. So what happens if a word in the email we're classifying isn't in our training set? We have to handle this edge case somehow, and the solution is to use something called Laplace smoothing, which we can insert into our code as an alpha variable. This just means we add one to every count, so it's never zero, because if we didn't, it would set the probability for some word, say cup, to zero, then the probability of the whole email becomes zero, regardless of how many other spammy phrases phrases there are. We still haven't gotten good results. What if we made our model itself stochastic? You mean like embed random variables in the architecture? Variational autoencoders. Such a great paper. I'll forward it to you. Please do. We might even be able to make our model as unpredictable as you. <laughs> My variance is pretty high. Are there improvements we could make to our model? Sure. We could have used a more efficient technique instead of bag of words and used n-grams instead of counting individual words, but hey, that's more than enough for this video. To summarize, probability theory helps us formally model the uncertainty of life, which is awesome. Bayes' theorem describes the probability of an event based on prior knowledge of conditions that might be related to the event. And naive Bayes classifiers apply Bayesian theorem with independence assumptions between features. The wizard of the week is Hamad Sheikh. Hamad's notebook demonstrates how to use principal component analysis to visualize a high dimensional data set and detect if a person has diabetes or not. I'm very impressed with the quality of his documentation. Definitely, definitely check it out. And the runner-up is Christian Wiekmann, who used three different autoencoders to visualize plant data. Very cool. This week's challenge is to write your own naive Bayes classifier on a text data set with better results than my demo. Details in the readme, GitHub links in the comments, and winners announced next week. Please subscribe for more programming videos, and for now, I've got to accept uncertainty. So, thanks for watching.